the Minnesota Senate Transportation Committee meeting of Monday, April 15th, 2024. The time is 3.19 p.m. We are in 11, room 1100 of the Minnesota Senate building. Uh, quorum is present, and I will also just mention in accordance with the rules of the Senate, the following members will be participating remotely in today's hearing. Uh, Senator Coleman from St. Paul and Senator Morrison from St. Paul. Uh, members, we have three bills on the agenda. Uh, Senator Jasinski says we're going to get out of here by 3.45. <laughs> so we'll start with um, Senator Herr uh, with Senate File 5117. Welcome to the committee, Senator Herr. Thank you. Welcome to your committee. Thank you, Chair Dibble. Um, in 2016, after Fernando Castile's death, a generous donor joined Don Samuel and the Board of Micro Grant to fund the Light Out, Lights Out program. Oh, Lights On program. Lights On is an innovative program that replaces traffic tickets with voucher. Um, promotes positive police community relation and enhanced traffic safety. This donation allowed micro grants to fully fund the Lights On program costs for many Minnesota law enforcement agencies interested in implementing the program. Lights On has grown from 12 departments to one, 140 and 112 police 24 sheriff offices and four districts of Minnesota State Patrol. Lights On has been free to all Minnesota agency and several departments want to join or expand their efforts. Several of our local cooperation have stepped up, including the Minnesota Vikings, Target, Lano Lakes, and Thomas Reuters. Even with their generous help, we need more funding to keep the likes on partners at no cost to the current agency. Likes on is supported by staff at the Minnesota DPS Office of Traffic Safety and the Minnesota Highway Patrol, which has planned to expand its scopes statewide in 2024. This bipartisan legislative request asks for $1.2 million from HUD and DBS blackout plates revenue to appropriate funds to lights on, which will pay for the program and keep it at no cost to Minnesota law enforcement. We have several letters of support that might be in front of you at the moment, Mr. Chair members. The lights on partners have handed out over one, uh, 10,000 vouchers Motorists who have received the voucher in a survey said that 99% had a very favorable or favorable interaction with the officer. 40% of the voucher recipients identify as BIPOC community members and are economically disadvantaged. Members and Mr. Chair, I ask for your support. I also have joined me here, which is a great honor as my predecessor, and also um, a leader in law enforcement in many roles in his portfolio, but my predecessor, uh, Senator John Harrington, and also, uh, we also have Chief Broker Hodges of Bloomington this here as well. Thank you, Senator Herr. Um, welcome, Chief. Welcome, Chief, Senator, Commissioner. <laughs> Who would like to go first? I'd like to go first. If All right. Pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. So, thank you very much, Senator Debo, Senator Har, members of the committee. Um, my name is John Harrington. I am the CEO of Microgrants, and Lights On is a program of Microgrants. Uh, as Senator Her said, seven years ago, about almost seven years ago, uh, when Philandro Castile died, the board of Microgrants asked the question, "What could we do to keep this from ever happening again?" And while you can never say absolutely you will never have another tragedy, what 
Lights On did uh, was create an innovative approach where instead of the downward spiral that traffic enforcement sometimes has, this voucher system acts as an educational opportunity, but it's also a problem-solving opportunity. But when we talk to motorists who have been stopped for an equipment violation, uh, what they say is, oftentimes it's not, they can, a, they didn't know the equipment was out, but secondarily, they didn't have the money to have it fixed. And so while the officer educates them that their light is out, and we know that having lights out on a vehicle, whether it's turn signals or headlights or taillights, over 50% of traffic crashes at night are related to defective equipment, according to NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Agency. They don't have any mechanism for getting it fixed immediately. And so what Lights On does is it provides them with a mechanism to actually get it fixed. The voucher is worth up to $250, uh, and it encourages them to get the light fixed quickly because the voucher is good for 14 days. Uh, we very specifically made it a 14-day turnaround because we want that car back on the road in fully operational uh, ways. Lights On has been uh, very well received. Um, we have grown from 12 small departments in the suburbs around Minneapolis and St. Paul to, as, as Senator Hurst said, 140 departments. And beyond that, there are another 40 departments across the United States who have adopted Lights On as a partnership. In Minnesota, Lights On has always been free. That was the original intent of the funder. Uh, who unfortunately passed on a few years ago, and so we are unable to get any additional funding from that philanthropic source, though we have continued to seek it. Uh, Lyson is a traffic safety program. As I said, both the National Highway Traffic Safety uh, Committee sees it as an innovative traffic safety program. The Minnesota Office of Traffic Safety sees it as an innovative traffic safety program. But in, beyond that, it is also a positive, it's a community policing program. It really does build positive police community relations. And I can tell you from Chief uh, Axel Henry's commentation, he said he was giving out a lights on voucher uh, to a lady who essentially it appeared she was living in her car. Uh, when he gave her the voucher, she was frankly shocked. She thought she was gonna get a tag, she thought her car might get towed, and all of her possessions in her car would have gone with it. He handed her the voucher, said, have a nice day, walked away from the car, he gets back in his car, he's out working another traffic stop. When he looks up behind him and sees the same woman has pulled up behind him. And she flashes and lights at him, he walks back and says, is there something that you need? He says, can I give you a hug? He says, this is the nicest thing anybody's done for me. Uh, everything I own is in this car. If, if I get tagged, I can't pay the tag. If this car gets towed, I can't get the car out of, out of hock. This gives me an opportunity to keep moving forward. Uh, among the many departments that have adopted Lights On, and as I said, that has grown exponentially over the years, and I'd like to see it continue to grow, is the Bloomington Police Department. And I asked my colleague, uh, Assistant Commissioner, Chief of Police, Booker Hodges, to speak on, on behalf of law enforcement uh, as someone who's currently in the field. Uh, thank you. CEO Harrington. <laughs> Welcome, uh, Chief Hodges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I'll keep my testimony brief. Uh, the Bloomington Police Department, uh, we re really value Lights On, uh, the program. Uh, we handed out more of these uh, tickets, or tickets, more of these vouchers than uh, any agency in the country other than the Jacksonville Police Department. Uh, we are an agency located in Hennepin County, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it where a lot of agencies are not conducting traffic stops. Our agency still conducts traffic stops and our officers have really found this program as a way to not only connect with residents but also provide people with the means to get their vehicles fixed so we're not uh, continuously stopping the same vehicles for the same violations. And we all believe in Bloomington too that uh, traffic safety is a way to keep our community safe and we think we've been very effective at doing that over the last couple of years and I would encourage you to support continue to support this program. Uh, thank you, Chief Hodges. Uh, Senator Herr, I know that we have the A2 amendment. Would you like to offer that? Uh, yes, yes, we do, Mr. Chair. And the A2 amendment, um, I, I'd like to ask for your support as well as uh, to add, um, I'll, I'll, to add, a, to add the phrase after uh, the word towns on line 14, to add the state patrol. 
So the uh, State Patrol would become uh, one of the eligible agencies to be able to disperse these vouchers. So uh, all in favor of the A2, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Motion carries. Um, Ms. Um, Boyd, would you like to acquaint us with the fiscal note? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, there is a fiscal note <clears throat> written to the bill. Um, it, it shows the 1.2 million um, in the current language appropriated from the Highway User Tax Distribution Fund. Um, I should note that the, the language says that the appropriation should be adjusted for inflation at the end of each biennium. Um, I don't see that noted in the fiscal note. Um, just, uh, just making a point about that, that that is also in the language. Um, and then under the assumptions on the fiscal note on page two, um, DPS is assuming that um, under Minnesota statute 16B98, which allows a default percentage for um, administrative costs for grants, they could utilize up to 5% of this appropriation, which would be $60,000. Um, however, in the next paragraph, it estimates that it will take about 150 staff hours per year, which comes out to about $8,000. And if you look at the bottom of the page, that $8,000 has been deducted from the actual amount for the grant to Lights On. So it, now it's $1.192 million that will go for the grants in each year. Great. Thank you. Um, I should, before we take it back to the committee, I should ask is... Would anyone else like to testify on Senate File 5117? All right. Uh, members, questions, uh, comments, or amendments? Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I've had uh, some discussions with the stakeholders on this. And uh, one of the big concerns I have, and Senator Newman would always live with me on this one, uh, but I have a tough time taking money out of what we're supposed to be building roads and bridges and taking out of this fund. So uh, we call it the HUTDF funds, and I think those that money should be used for roads and bridges, not replacing taillights. So uh, with that, I'd offer the A1. Senator Jasinski offers the A1 amendment, uh, which would change the source of the funding from the Highway User Tax Distribution Fund and make it uh, uh, eligible from the, the general fund. Uh, questions, members, to the amendment? Um, members, uh, I discussed this or texted with Senator Herr uh, about this, um, and uh, I would be supportive of this. I know the House has taken an even different, or the other body has taken an even different uh, uh, fund into account for this matter. Um, but in any case, uh, it is probably likely to a degree of great certainty that the Highway User Tax Distribution Fund being constitutionally constrained probably wouldn't even be an eligible use for this program. So I would be supportive of this. Um, of this A1 amendment. And um, we will continue to look at this should this bill come forward again in the omnibus finance bill in a few days. Um, members, any questions on the A1? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. All right. Members, further questions? Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, looking at the fiscal note, I see that 5% uh, looks like is an administrative fee for DPS. Uh, is there any idea what the administrative fee is for lights on or for each uh, police department, e each agency, or is there a cap on any administrative fee that any of these can uh, take for this program? Uh, Mr. Harrington. So, Senator Dibble, Senator Howell, uh, the Lights On uh, operation is supported by microgrants, and we, uh, for other departments outside of the state of Minnesota, ask them to contribute a 10% administrative fee to support the operation of Lights On. In Minnesota, we do not charge any administrative fees at all. So the program is completely free, turnkey for Minnesota agencies. Uh, we print the vouchers for them. We distribute the vouchers to them. We uh, take all the bills. We pay all the bills so that they don't have to do anything with the bills whatsoever. We collect the surveys and we provide them with the information uh, at the end of the process as to what the surveys tell us. So there is no administrative fee for Minnesota departments at all. Senator Howe. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. So if that, that's, that's good. I, I appreciate that. Uh, are these voucher, vouchers to go anywhere to get it fixed, or do they have to go to a certain location? Uh, how do other, if, if it's free for any, they can take the voucher to any place to get it fixed, or do they got to go to certain locations? Uh, Mr. Harrington. Senator Dibble, Senator Howe. Uh, what we have done is we have recruited six, over 600 uh, auto parts and auto repair shops who will take the vouchers. Uh, and we continue to upgrade that as we get new locations. What we do is we ask the local police department to supply us with the name of veteran-owned, minority-owned, women-owned, and, and reputable repair shops in their jurisdiction that they would feel comfortable having their cars taken. We then contract with them so that they will take the vouchers. So if you are stopped, for example, if you were stopped in Bloomington with a taillight out, you could go to our website, put in your home zip code, and it would tell you where the closest repair shop that takes the vouchers are to your home zip code. Now, obviously, if you live outside of the state of Minnesota, there are far more limited number of repair shops than there are in the state of Minnesota. But uh, no, it's not completely unlimited, but uh, with 600 repair shops, we have not had any complaints about uh, individuals having to drive long distances to get their cars repaired. And how? Members, I um, just wanted to call your attention to the materials in your packet. Um, there's a great uh, presentation that we didn't go through that kind of takes you through how the Lights On program works, and it even has a copy of what the voucher looks like uh, in it. And they're done in fancy color copies, so <laughs> don't let those go to waste. And then uh, some good articles and, some, and, a, and a bunch of letters of support. Uh, Senator Dzinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I agree with the safety issue, and I've had this discussion with, with Mr. Harrington. I, I also thought about it, uh, some unintended consequences, so it, it's kind of promoting a coupon to get if you don't have something fixed. So I, I don't want to have the reverse effect, so if I know I have a broken taillight, well, I'm just going to drive it until I get a ticket, then I'm going to get $250 to pay for it. And I think that's one of the unintended consequences that may happen. So. Uh, Average person out there knows they have a broken taillight. They know about this program, and also they just decide they're going to wait until they get pulled over for it because they can get a $250 coupon to get it repaired. So that's some of the concern I have, and I, I brought mention to Mr. Herring, it's, it's a whole personal responsibility. I mean, you have to take responsibility to, to keep your car in working order. And again, I think if you look at it from another way, that to, to manipulate the system, you can just I've not replace my taillight until I get pulled over, and then I get a $250 coupon to get it done. So that's my concern. Uh, again, we're spending $1.2 million a year to do this, and, and I think it's got unintended consequences. It's going to go the other way, and people won't get their taillights fixed because they know they'll just drive it until they get pulled over, and then they're going to get a coupon to do it. So that's my concerns uh, with, with uh, what could happen with this program. Uh, who would like to field that or respond if it's in, uh, Mr. Harrington? Senator Dibble, Senator Jasinski. I, I, I appreciate the concern. Uh, and and the, what, as I said, this is really a, a win, win, win program. The, one of those wins is it enhances police community relations. And so one of the things, and, and there are departments who have uh, said what we do is we want the person then to come to the police department to get the voucher, but they're still having an interaction, a positive interaction with law enforcement at that point. And I think there is a value uh, statewide in positive police community relations where we're building trusting relationships between the motoring public and, and, and the, the enforcement agencies within the state. Uh, we have not seen uh, the coupon shopping uh, that you've described. There are agencies that um, have not issued a voucher in, in months, but I have not heard from them that they have been received letters or calls or anything else that people are trying to sort of game the system to get a coupon. Frankly, most people don't like getting pulled over by the police. I, I think that's fair to say. Uh, and so I don't know that that has been something that we have heard of or have seen. Um, but I do believe that even if that was the case, having them come down to the police station to talk to a cop to explain that their car is defective, that they want to get it fixed, and if they knew that there is this program for it, it's still, it's, it's a community policing program. How can we help you remain law abiding? How can we help you drive safely? All right. Um, I also wanted to mention, members, that uh, 
Clarence Castile, who is Philando Castile's uncle, um, wanted to be here to testify but could not be, but um, his testimony was submitted in writing and that's in your packet. He also serves on the Foundation Board of Directors. So. All right, members, anything further? Senator Hurt, final well, word. Thank you, thank you, Chair Dubo, and uh, thank you, Senator Jasinski, and the rest of the members, and I would just like to conclude with a little add-on to what uh, uh, Chief Harrington just mentioned. You know, I, I suppose that folks that are um, going to take advantage of this is a random, so they're not going to wait a year or so, two years, just to get pulled over by police. These are people that, you know, don't have the means, don't have the money to repair their tailgate right away, and uh, a vulture actually will bring... Um, pleasantness to to their daily life and uh, become continue to be productive and contribute system to our society. Uh, this is a positive police relation um, legislation, and you know I wish that there's more of this going on in a community where people and police are talking to each other, which in turn will reduce crime in the long long term. So I, at the same same time, I felt the loss for. Um, Philando Castillo, but um, he had brought a lot of, out of his passing, had brought a lot of positiveness into uh, our uh, resolution in life, and I uh, appreciate Senator uh, Harrington for being here to ask me to chief author this bill. Thank you, and ask for your support. Great. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Herr. Um, with that, we will lay, what is the number? Senate File 5117 on the table for possible inclusion in, as amended, thank you, um, for inclusion in the uh, omnibus, possible inclusion in the omnibus finance supplemental bill. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Jasinski is going to chair. Members, next up we have Senate file number 5285. Senator Dibble, to your bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, with Senate file uh, 5285, um, oh, first let me uh, thank you for the opportunity to present Senate file 5285 and thank my co-authors, Senator Shosinski and Morrison. Um, and what Senate file 5285 seeks to accomplish is to require the Met Council to prepare and submit uh, in consultation with uh, Minnesota Management Budget, budget uh, Financial Review to the Senate and House committees um, that details their revenue and expenditures for uh, the transportation components of the Met Council's budget. Uh, and members, you can see um, it goes into uh, significantly more detail than, than what we have asked for uh, before, uh, you know, with revenues, expenditures, transfers, reserve balances, uh, et cetera, um, as well as forecasts. Um, as well as um, uh, actual amounts in, in recent years. Um, uh, members, uh, the, the purpose, of course, is to inform uh, the deliberations uh, and the direction and the budgeting uh, that the legislature, uh, you know, the information that the legislature needs to perform all of those functions uh, in its capacity to oversee and, and uh, you know, provide for the the policy and budget direction uh, to the Met Council in its capacity as an agency. There's always a discussion, is Met Council an agency or is it a local unit of government? In this case, we're, of course, uh, taking the perspective uh, that the Met Council is, is an agency of state government delivering uh, public services that it needs to report to and be accountable for to the legislature. And to that end, uh, members, um, I would like to offer the A2 amendment. Senator Dibble offers the A2 amendment. Uh, and uh, I'll provide a very brief description and maybe uh, uh, Mr. Greenfield and Ms. Boyd can help me um, with a little bit of the description as well. But um, what the A2 amendment uh, accomplishes is, is moving the report uh, to a period of time for which it would be more useful uh, to the legislature rather than coming in April, which is towards the end of, of uh, our work uh, every year. It would come in, in December. Um, it would make the um, reporting uh, uh, 
to not just the committee chairs and, and the and the leads, um, but also make sure we're getting it into the people who actually know how to read these things and inform us and advise us, so our staff, uh, partisan and otherwise. Um, and then uh, we do receive uh, regularly uh, an operating reserves report that would also move that uh, that reporting period. It would advance that also to a time frame, which would be more useful to our purposes. Um, how did I do? Good. Thank you, Senator Dibble. Ms. Boyd. Uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Dibble, I think that was pretty thorough. Um, just to sum up, um, both this new financial review and the reserves report that's in current law um, would be moved from a springtime uh, due date to a fall um, due date. Um, the staff would be added as recipients, and on both, it would no longer be reported on a calendar year, which is the Metropolitan Council budget, but a state fiscal year, um, I believe, to make it maybe more useful to legislators as they use this report going into the session. Um, and then on lines 14 and 15 of the amendment is just um, some language change choices, and that would be it. Thank you, Ms. Boyd. Senator Dibble renews his... Uh Offer to offer the A2 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. And Senator Dibble, I understand you have one testifier, uh, Mr. Zelli. Yes, I believe Chair Zelli is here. Yes, he is. All right. Thanks, Karen. See ya. Good afternoon, Mr. Zelli. Please uh, say your name and uh, for the record. And proceed with your testimony. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Senator, uh, Senator Dibble. My name is Charlie Zelli. I am the chair of the Metropolitan Council. Uh, and it's my honor to be brief, but to uh, speak uh, in favor of this uh, uh, Bill 5285. Um, you know, a year ago, uh, it's amazing what a difference a year makes. The sales tax for transit has really uh, solidified the regional transit system of, of Metro Transit and all those that uh, receive funding from that sales tax. And, uh, and especially when you consider the entrenched structural deficit uh, of our transit system, uh, the 13 items that were listed as priorities, the uh, funding of the operating costs of transit ways, and probably most especially the capital uh, maintenance going forward, which was never clear as to how that funding uh, could be accomplished, so it really was unfunded. And that has been, uh, that has been rectified uh, by that bill, and so the idea of actually uh, doing a study in, in full transparency and accountability uh, to the legislature um, we recognize the importance of, our, of reporting that uh, and not only uh, the costs as those that I've mentioned, but all the um, transportation funding um, in addition to the new sales tax, uh, motor vehicle sales tax, general funds, federal appropriations, fares, um, and I think that uh, not only the legislature, but the public deserves to understand uh, the different accounts and how this uh, funding is put uh, put together. We're in the process of analyzing the uh, the cost going forward. I mentioned the capital maintenance; that's probably the most uh, 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 complicated kind of stretch as we look forward. Uh, but we want to be responsible. We've We've uh, hired Baker Tilly and our own kind of accounting uh, folks who are now doing that. And, and, in, and as the bill has been amended, uh, we certainly support and look favorably at the idea of providing that uh, uh, yet this year uh, in advance of the next session. Um, so we uh, certainly support that and putting it in terms of the state fiscal budget, not just our own calendar year budget uh, makes sense and we can do that as well. So uh, I just overall think in our effort to become more transparent, even some of these uh, financials which are available, putting it in the context of the transit system uh, makes a lot of sense. So we, we, I'm here to support the bill. Thank you, Chair Zelli. Uh, questions, or Senator Dibble? 
Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I know you had the A1 amendment, but you're chairing now, so it's hard for you to offer an amendment. I don't think we do that in the Senate. So I can offer it, or you can have one of your members offer it. Uh, thank you, Senator Dibble. You can go ahead and offer it. All right, so I'll offer the A1 amendment on behalf of Senator Jasinski. Senator Dibble offers the A1 amendment. Members, it should be in your packet. Uh, again, this is, I'll turn it back to you, Senator Dibble. Um, so uh, the A1 amendment uh, simply uh, adds on, on page two the sentence on line two that says a breakout for each transportation funding source identified by the council then goes out to, to kind of detail out what those sources might be, uh, which include um, sales tax, property tax, federal funds, legislative appropriations, and fair collections. I see a nod from Chair Zelli. Looks agreeable. <laughs> I, Thank you, as I previously mentioned, I think all sources of revenue should be yeah. considered. Thank you. Uh, questions, members? If not, Senator Dibble offers the A1. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Motion carries. Senator Dibble. So um, I had a, it, it occurs to me as I sit here, um, I had a question for council or fiscal analyst. Um, we have, well, you also have the 5% uh, that is set aside from the sales tax for the purpose of non-motorized transportation that will be granted on a competitive grant-making basis um, through the TABS regional solicitation. Does this, I assume this does not capture any reporting on those, how those funds are used. Is that correct? Ms. Boyd? Or Mr. Greenfield, either one? Senator Dibble, um, I, I don't want to give an answer off the cuff on that one. I can look into it for you or maybe Chair Zelli would have more info or someone from that council, but we can look into that as we continue to work with this language if that's your desire to include Thank that. you. I would appreciate that. It would be my intent that the legislature should be informed of how those funds are used annually as well. Thank so you. So that might show up later. Thanks. Okay. Members, questions? Seeing none, final comments, Senator Dibble. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for your support, uh, Senator Drzinski, for this and, and your support, uh, Chair Zelli. And um, I think this is just a transparency, good government um, move. And um, yeah, I think it's, a, it's worth supporting. Thank you, Senator Dibble. This uh, bill will be set aside for possible inclusion. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next bill uh, this afternoon, our last bill, Senate File 5353, uh, Senator Dibble. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members. Um, so Senate uh, file 5353 simply um, builds on uh, a measure that we took uh, last year, um, which, uh, which um, acknowledges that uh, we, have, we have or we had a fairly um, little idea of, of, of a large portion of the funds <coughs> that are being used for transportation purposes in the metropolitan area um, as we're authorized by the legislature, but then enacted by the counties. And that's, of course, the county enacted sales tax, which, um, if you recall, kind of originated as the quarter cent sales tax uh, for transit uh, in the metropolitan area that five of the seven metropolitan counties enacted came together in the form of the County Transportation Improvement Board um, for the purpose of making grants to the Met Council for um, capital costs of of transit ways, but then for reasons that are complicated that I barely remember, um, we decided to dissolve the County Transit Improvement Board. Um, that quarter cent sales tax then reverted to each county on a county by county basis, and they were then allowed to add to that by another quarter cent up to a full half cent for transportation purposes. But then we kind of lost sight of, of um, how exactly those funds are being used, um, even though they're feeding into the larger regional mobility, access, transportation, and transit picture. And so we thought we would ask for the counties uh, on, a, on a regular basis uh, due on February 15th um, uh, of every year um, how those funds were being used. Um, this bill um, adds a little bit to uh, the kinds of information that we're asking for. Um, and then uh, provides a mechanism to uh, really emphasize that we really do want this information in a timely manner, you know, in time for the legislature to get a better picture of what's going on with transportation and transit investments uh, in the metropolitan area. Now, I know the counties are not happy about that piece, and, and uh, you know, we'll have more conversation about whether or not that's really needed. Um, all of, I think all except for Ramsey have submitted 
uh, their reports. We're still waiting for Ramsey. The reports, like I said, are due February 15th. One of the counties reported uh, on time. That was Dakota County. And then they added uh, to their report a little bit more information. We thought, oh, that's a good idea. I think your staff spotted that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Um, and so, uh, so we added to the, the kinds of information um, that we would be asking for. Um, you see on this chart, um, the rest kind of trickled in over the course of month of the month of March. Um, then we just got one from Anoka um, a few days ago. Um, so, um, so that is my proposal. I think and I think uh, we have. Do we have amendments? Yeah, we have amendments. Thank you, Mr. Chair, you have an A1 amendment. Yeah, the A1 amendment I will offer, Mr. Chair. Senator Dibble offers the A1. Uh, would you like to report the amendment, Senator Dibble? Um, so, uh, Mr. Chair, the A1 uh, both expands to whom the, the report is made um, so that it gets into the hands of people who know what they're doing and can advise us. And, uh, uh, and then also, um, Yeah, I guess that's the extent of the report. It just expands to whom we report. Thank you. Anyone else like to input on that? Ms. Boyd? Um, just to um, add a little bit, that, um, yeah, the partisan and nonpartisan staff were, were already an added um, a recipient in the bill. This just standardizes the language to match what we've been doing in other places on how staff is defined, but also on line 1.2 of the amendment um, adds ranking minority members to recipients. Thank you, Ms. Boyden. Uh, members, any questions? If not, Senator Dibble renews his motion to pass the A1 amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Senator Dibble. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question again for our Senate Council, our learned council and learned fiscal analysts. Um, I assume it is the case that this report does not include the 17% of the newly enacted metro-wide sales tax that is, uh, is, is Mr. Greenfield. flows to counties. Mr. Chair and Chair Dibble, it does not include the 17%. All right. So, uh, Mr. Chair, members, it would be my intention that we also hear from the counties how those funds are, are being programmed and expended. So. Um, just a word to my friends sitting behind me or those who are listening, we're going to add to this report um, those funds that are received by the counties for transportation purposes as well. Hey, Mr. Chair, do you want to do a verbal amendment or is it going to show up later? Show up later. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yes. I think they've been notified. <laughs> uh, members, any other questions? I don't think we have anybody testifying. Anybody want to testify in this item? Seeing none, back to the members. Any questions? Or comments? Thank you, Senator Dibble. Last comments? Uh, it's a good bill. I appreciate your support. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Dibble. Senate file 5353 will be laid over for possible inclusion in the Senate Finance Bill. As amended. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, um, that concludes our business uh, for today. Oh, do you need to? And, well, any updates <laughs> on our next meeting? Staff. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Jasinski. We will be meeting on Wednesday at our usual time at 3 p.m., and we'll be talking about our supplemental finance bill on that date. And we will roll out our DE amendment, and then we will actually take the final vote and uh, vote on all amendments on Friday at noon. And Mr. Mr. Chair, we'll be hearing from the agencies um, uh, what, what they are bringing forward uh, in terms of the governor's recommendations. Um, and we will uh, be posting and, you know, we'll, of course, be working with you and your staff, you know, for the, the sneak preview um, before we post um, by tomorrow. Um, so there will be, um, you know, a good 24-ish hours so that you and the, and the public can review um, what would be proposed in the, in the DE. Um, and then, of course, yeah, we'll be taking testimony from whoever sign, would like to sign up and testify on the DE and then mark up on Friday. Okay, thank you, Senator Dibble. With there being no other business, we are hereby adjourned. <laughs>